find a way to, oh, get this uh, phone mounted somewhere. Let me see here. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing double duty tonight because I'm trying to get the live stream for our church uh, worship night to work. And, uh, but, and also I'm going to be talking with, uh, my sisters, Sarah and Katie Armstrong, who I see Sarah has joined. What's up? Um, let me see here. Uh, when you're ready, go ahead and request me over, uh, and then we'll join while I go figure this out. All right. Hold on. Okay. Uh, worship night. MP4 format. All right. And I see them joining in. Cool. Oh, wait. One second. Let me go ahead and. Weird here. But uh, let's see if we can get them. Well, yeah. hello, sisters. We got our coffee, our decaf coffee, Daniel. What's going De on? Decaf coffee. I am like so behind on everything. And I, because we're supposed to stream our worship night uh, for Vision uh, for 7.30. You know, it was pre-recorded. But tonight? I'm, yeah, it's a worship. Yeah, tonight. Um, like, I'm, uh, it's pre-recorded already. But this file, video file, is like 150 gigabytes. And I'm trying to like, it's find a way to you know, I don't send it send it to Derek and uh you know so he can you know live stream it um so it's gonna it's tough <laughs> and so um well, your haircut looks nice looking all fresh well I mean I did it myself you know because oh, you know, really? wow. yeah because yeah, we good. can't yeah we can't um we can't even get a haircut anywhere because we're quote-unquote quarantined mm -hmm. so how are you two sisters doing? We're just Pretty good. Been doing good, you know. Been quarantined together and yeah, everything, of you know. Yeah. One day Hi, at Haley. a time. Hi, Haley. Haley just joined. Hi, Haley. <laughs> um, yeah, the quarantine's been weird though. Sarah's uh, furloughed, so she's not actually working. And then uh, I uh, lost one of my I nanny for two families. I lost uh, one. Oh. So nice. I'm nannying part time. But it was always wow. kind of part time, but part time, part time now. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. is your whole family in the house or your mom and dad working? Is everyone all just in the house? Who's all well, in the everybody's in the house right now, but um, I mean, your my, little parents family are, all my parents are still working. I'm furloughed. So all I'm doing is just, you know, at home work, you know, with voiceovers and uh, oh, um, how nice. Yeah, this is basically all my, like my room is basically my, you know, my work recording place, so. studio. Yeah. <laughs> my recording studio and all that so mm -hmm. um you know find a way to be creative and then also like there's some people that like uh, a friend of mine who's doing worship in huntington she wanted my help over there and so um uh for a little bit while you know pre-record some worship so i'm some I'm, I'm 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 a busy guy so yeah that's awesome bigger. i love yeah. that you're doing these lives i think that's so cool because i think god has really gifted you daniel to do these things i appreciate that yeah because yeah. i just you know we're quarantined it's like oh, i gotta do something and then also catch up with friends and people that i haven't seen in a while or not yeah. able to talk to and i mean i used to talk to you guys a lot every sunday yeah. every thursday and then then and then we all had lives. So <laughs> not that we all had lives back then. So. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yes. But, uh, so true. Yeah. You two look great, I got to say, fresh. And, uh, you know. Oh, well, that's nice. I mean, yeah. who knows with this quarantine? Sarah, well, Sarah's more the inspiration, but she's like, we're coming out of this on top, you know? Uh -huh. We aren't going to get dragged under and turn into couch potatoes. Yeah, we've been doing workout videos every night. I'm like, I'm the coach. Yeah. You find us a good workout video. Yeah. And so I, I, she doesn't know what she's going into each morning. And I'm uh -huh. like, yes, uh -huh. be ready. And sometimes I'm like, you know, you're going to get punished in workout tomorrow. And uh -huh. you're like, I'll I'll get her. Yeah. But yeah, so we're gonna, you know, because it's easy to fall into that slump yeah, of not caring, and like depression, and not wanting to yeah. take care of yourself, yeah, and just forgive eating all the time. Multi, forgive me for multitasking. This is what I'm doing. This is actually Christian right here. Oh, and, nice! Oh, wow. Yeah, because yeah, I was editing everything, and so 
and we're trying to you know, live stream this whole thing. But as you can see right here, it's yeah, I'm around the neighborhood. Um, 144, 144 gigabytes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Which is like yeah. half my storage. So. You can't just use, uh, what is it, Dropbox? It won't let me upload on Dropbox. It's just because it's, it's too big of a file to upload. Like, wow. Okay. That's a first. <laughs> like, cause that's, how, and that, that's how big it is. So, uh, so I am double tasking, but I am talking to you guys. And so, um, well, um, I just wanted people to get to know who you are because you two have inspiring social media blogs and you guys are just inspiring just in general and not just oh, in social media you. but also to me and um we first met at vision city church a few years ago and yeah. um that and then that's how we just you know we we met there and then all of a sudden we just kicked it off we were just like oh damn we're actually real homies now <laughs> so, yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah. I remember, yeah, you I remember you invited me. So you got to come to Harvest and check that out oh, a couple yeah. times. And you were yeah. the reason that we got into Harvest Thursday nights. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're like, you got to come. You got to hang out. You got to meet everybody. So uh, that's when we were like, okay. And we're like, who's this crazy cat inviting us to this har crazy. Harvest? And so, <laughs> yeah, but it was nice. You got us those front row seats mm -hmm. and took us and show us everywhere. And I think that was the start of just something special, Daniel. That's yeah. Special. Yeah, and then... I'm. I will never forget you, Sarah. Unfortunately, Katie couldn't. Katie couldn't come. I don't know what happened, but uh, the Michael <laughs> Jr. comedy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that special. the concert thing? No, the comedy. Well, we went to my, we went to oh, the yeah. Josh Garrels too. Together. Josh. Yeah. Well, wow, we went to yes. a couple of places by ourselves. Like like that. Josh Garrels is just me and you. That's yes. funny. Yeah. The Hard it's Rock like, Cafe or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, Katie is always being like the party pooper. She doesn't want to hang out with us, and so. I think. <laughs> I had legitimate yeah. reasons for those things. <laughs> I can't, who knows what they are? They would have had to have been like, I don't even know, nannying or something. I don't even know. Prove it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that sounded fun. So, I mean, Sarah always comes back and tells me about them. So. Yeah, that was great. All right. Yeah. That's cool. Hey, Lauren just joined us, the Vitality artist. I just uh, met her. Well, I didn't really met her, but like we connected through a Food Chapel Young Adults uh, a page because I, you know, she was interested in going to Israel and like. Oh, I, yeah, 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 that's awesome. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to save and raise money for that. Well, also too, aren't we on, all? Aren't we all? That's on our bucket list too. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm. I think I want to go this year because Free Chapel is going this year at the end November. Oh, wow. But we're just waiting update on the uh, the whole coronavirus thing because we don't know how long that's going to be. Is and the pastor, then, what's his name, they're going to be uh, leading it, doing it? Like, what's uh, that? Jensen Franklin? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. going to be there. And, uh, yeah, he, he's he's really cool. And, and speaking yeah. of him, I don't know, those, the two tweets that the president tweeted, you know, about to check in church was first was Jensen and then Greg, you know, this past Sunday. Oh, wow. And, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. And like 1.3 million people tuned in because of the president's tweet. Yeah. 11,000 11, decisions to follow Christ, which is awesome. Yeah, that's so, pretty cool. Wild. Yeah. So um, I wanted okay, at least uh, I want you two to sweet. share um, about how you came to the Lord, how you came to this point, uh, where you, where you, where you guys come from and all that. And just, yeah, basically your life point, how you, how God has led you to where you guys are right now. So. Oh gosh, well, yeah, I'll try to give you the the Reader's Digest, the uh, Reader's Digest version. Reader's Digest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's obviously a lot that goes into that, but I guess you know, I mean, Casey, Katie have different perspectives and everything too. Growing up in the same house, yeah. you know, we saw things different from different eyes. So in my head, yeah. certain things happen, but she doesn't remember certain things that way. So or they just probably stopped happening at the time yeah. I, I had a memory but so people ask all the time if like I grew up Christian and everything and I honestly I called myself a Christian my my whole life I mm -hmm. I mean I literally believed in Jesus which is crazy because we went to church I went to Awana's I went to church camp I mean there was mm -hmm. I, I still talk my about my church camp was the best time of my life and mm -hmm. but 
Um, yeah, but I don't think anyone ever, I don't think I ever saw what it was to really follow Jesus. That wasn't really lived out in our home. We kind of just went to Sunday school and everything. And I just, just wouldn't. Christian just joined in. What's up, dude? Hey, just so you know, I'm double tasking. I'm actually trying to get you know, uh, your worship video going right now. Yeah, so uh, don't worry. Like, I'm, not on it. I'm, I'm on it right now, dude. So don't, uh, don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> uh, hey, Byron, what's up, dude? How have you been, man? It's been a long time. Uh, he's the, the the guy who does the uh, harvest security, the black dude. So, oh yeah, nice. Yeah, he just joined in, and so what's up, man? Good, hope to hear from you soon. I gotta get you to talk with us uh, sometime, Byron. Let me know, dude. Uh, sorry, Armstrong, go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I grew up kind of. I always grew up believing in Jesus and believing God, going to church. Uh -huh. But kind of like in high school, we fell away. We didn't. We stopped going to church as much. We went on Easter and Christmas and. And, you know, um, yeah, and then I kind of just got into just drinking, going out with friends, and um, my life was never like, yeah, just kind of doing my own thing, and got caught up in all the way through college of just going out and drinking and partying, and like I said, God was just a far distance in my mind. I still believed mm -hmm. in God. I'd still go to church on Christmas and Easter, but I just didn't have any mm -hmm. relationship with Jesus. And so I, I look back now, I'm like, you know, gosh, was I really a Christian? But in my mm -hmm. heart, like what I was told, I just didn't know. So I thought yeah. I was. So I don't know. But my life didn't reflect it. And so mm -hmm. I ended up moving to San Diego. And the drinking and the partying just got escalated and, wow. and worse. And then... um yeah, pretty much this was a hot mess express, you could say. Mm -hmm. I, I got things just got pretty like, yeah, empty and broken. Mm -hmm. I picked up some DUIs along the way. I spent mm. some, uh, had to get arrested along the way um, mm. a few times. A few times, yeah. And so wow. I got, yeah, I got. Not just once, but like a lot. Wow. Oh, yeah. Like I was arrested. <laughs> That's crazy. Probably, like, no I, like, probably like that. five like five different times I probably was arrested wow. Wow. <laughs> so yeah when I see those police man I know I know uh, I know, know what goes on in those cop cars and oh <laughs> Daniel, like Daniel you used to be the police me and you went to good got along back in the day let's just yeah say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to run into you when I was uh, on duty <laughs> yeah I know yeah. I mean that's it's funny now because I can look back and especially laugh at some of the times like I mean it's, uh, fun. it's what's embarrassing is my last my last DUI um I actually tried to run so I got a resisting <laughs> arrest and so Whoa. it's already embarrassing crazy girl. That, <laughs> well it's funny because you Dang. think a resisting arrest is like no you're not who would have, like, who, but, okay first of all whoever's watching comment below and Look at look at look at Sarah. Can you picture her of <laughs> someone like her being arrested for resisting arrest, I, like fleeing from police and all I, of that? <laughs> running from yeah, yeah. And so it was embarrassing because then and for that why it was on my record. Not only did I have a DUI, but it said resisting arrest, and so people just it looked like I was some out of control. But I honestly just wow. wanted ice. I tried to run home. That's I tried. And the officer grabbed me. He's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And I just, he's just. Wow. He's, so anyways, um, but so I got to a place where I was completely just so empty and broken. <laughs> and I remember calling, like talking to my mom and I was like, you know, I don't know what's wrong with me. Why do I, I don't know why I keep doing the same things. I'm just, uh -huh. I don't know. And she's like, you know, there's this Christian recovery place. I mean, this, this retreat place I want you to go check out and I remember being like mom mm -hmm. I don't need to see some bible thumper place I want to go to mm -hmm. like a place and just totally turned off to God I was like that's not mm -hmm. the issue and I ended up going and checking this place out and I, I honestly just felt such peace while I was there so I was like you know what mm -hmm. it was in Huntington Beach and I was like I was living with my dad I was 26 at this time granted mm -hmm. I had lived moved in with my dad this is how broken I was 26 mm -hmm. my dad was dropping me up at work the only job i could find in where he lived was at subway so i was like mm. which is fine which is fine but it's just like my dad's dropping i felt like you know that's a lot a lot of my co-workers were people starting out with their first job and here mm -hmm. dad, my dad my dad's dropping me off at subway he's like mm -hmm. honey you forgot your visor and i'm just like oh my yeah gosh. it's like what this is my life <laughs> and so wow um, but anyway, so, uh, so yeah, I ended up going to this place and right when they took us to church that night and it was a Christian place, all focused on Jesus mm -hmm. and yeah. knowing him and all this stuff. And I just was like, okay, I don't even know what this place is, but I went uh -huh. to the place is actually free chapel. They took us to free chapel. Okay. And, and I felt 
the worship came on and I literally felt they started praising God and I felt something turn on in my heart, which I hadn't uh, felt in years. And I was just like, wow. I literally felt my heart turn on. And I just was like, this is what I've been missing. This is the issue. And, and after uh -huh. that, I just, we were, I was immersed in Jesus. I, I started reading my Bible. I got counseling for all this mm -hmm. stuff I went through and mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I totally encountered the Lord. And it's just like, it was crazy. And yeah, I was, I was set on fire and I ended up, I ended up leaving there kind of was a baby Christian and I mm -hmm. was not really prepared for the spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I, I started thinking like I could just go out with, hang out with old people and kind of live that life, but still have that relationship with the Lord, kind of have one foot in and I got pulled in fast. And so for a year wow. I was back in causing a muck and that's when I actually got that third, that DUI. And, um, wow. and then that was my broken state. I'm like, God, if you want me to go to jail, I'll go to jail, whatever you want. I'm done with this life. I'm ready to serve you. I was like, I'm so done. You can have everything. And you know, there's a ton of different like testimonies that go through that yeah. whole that that whole part. But he was the only one who actually knew my heart was ready to was changed. And so uh -huh. um, I was prepared to go to like, I was looking at a big jail sentence because it was a multiple DUI and all the stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, God, if you're ready, if you need me to go to jail, I'll go there. And he ended up long story short, kept me from going to jail. It was like a third DUI, high BAC in California. Like they make you, they throw the book at you. And so I ended up, I should have had to go to jail for the at least four months. Law too, yeah. Yeah. And um, I walked out of there and didn't have to spend another day in jail except for my arrest day. And so my lawyer was just like, I've never wow. seen anything like that. But I literally had turned from completely like repented, turned from my uh -huh. old sin and ran <laughs> far. I was like immersed in Bible studies. I was giving my life back to God. I went mm -hmm. back to counseling. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. after that, I was set, I set on fire. And I, I remember calling Katie. I was like, I was like, mm -hmm. God, you're the only one who can get to her hard heart. Yeah. Please get to Come her. On. And she wouldn't Come want anything on. to do. Yeah, she didn't want anything to do with God. She was in a different state. And I was like, okay. And so yeah, that's kind of what set me on fire. And then that mm -hmm. that's kind of my story ever this since the rest is history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's crazy that yeah, is yeah. absolutely crazy. Crazy. crazy no yeah. one would like even i like <laughs> you know like even to this day i mean I'm, i remember you telling me that story but like i still can't even believe it like that's your story like, yeah that's that is crazy. nuts. i know i look back now <laughs> it's like nuts. being in jail and some of those times and you look back and man it's just i remember that i spent that one day when i got arrested at the Santa Ana jail. And that was the oh. most worst experience of my life. I've never seen people talk so, so awfully like at that jail to people. Like it was horrible. And I, Are you I talking was talking about like, the deputies or the inmates? The deputies. Yeah. Oh, the really? deputies were so awful, just parading and just, it was, it, I mean, the ones in Costa Mesa are really nice. The ones at the jail in Santa Ana oh. and I, they deal with the hardest of the hardest criminals. So I get that a yes. lot of them were probably really hard into that, but that was awful. And so I told God, I was like, I don't want to go back there. But if you think I should go back there, I'll go back there. Yeah. And he, he literally kept me out because I don't know what it would have been like if I would have had to go back to there. But anyway, mm. and yeah, so that's kind of where I just started. Yeah, that's where. And like I said, Katie didn't, <laughs> Katie didn't know, know Jesus at that time. So I remember calling her and I'd be like, God, do you want to like, I got this great book, like if you were trying to be subtle and trying to lure her into the Lord. And she'd be like, Sarah, just stop. I don't want to hear about your God books. I don't want to hear from mm -hmm. you. And she really, yeah. I'm very in tune with hidden motives. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, yeah. then Katie can kind of uh -huh. tell her story. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, want to I hear mean, it. yeah, two different perspectives of our family life. I would say mm -hmm. we didn't grow up Christian. Um, mm -hmm. We didn't grow up in a Christian household. I would say, I do remember going to very random Easter and Christmas services, but they, I mean, I can't even say I remember every year. You know, they definitely stopped by high school for sure for me. Yeah. But I mean, I didn't even know what Easter was. So it was just, we definitely weren't a Christian family. And if, if, we, were, if, we, if we were, you would have never known it never mm -hmm. like nobody there was no god or anything but we prayed before we ate and before we went I to bed so I she said she didn't remember any of that though See, i do like, well we never ate together we had the talk but anyways this is my turn to talk you had your turn to talk okay so two <laughs> completely different perspectives I love it. of our growing up of our growing yeah. up but anyways <laughs> for me it was it was 
pretty simple. I mean, uh -huh. um, I, you it's know, unusual. simple, but unusual, I guess. Yeah. So I was in San Diego. I had moved there after I graduated college and Sarah went, was going through her, her whole stuff. Yeah. She was mm -hmm. calling me every so often and she mm -hmm. brought up God. And obviously I knew that God had helped her get out mm -hmm. of the mess that she was in. So from mm -hmm. my perspective, I was just being thankful that she found something that worked, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it was for me. I was one of the people that was like, I'm glad that worked for you, but I don't need that. No, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, every time somebody tries to cram it down your throat, you're only going to be more hostile towards it. So mm -hmm. Lord led, if you're trying to minister to someone, manipulating or do, that's never going to work. Yeah, but when you're a baby Christian, you're a new Christian, it's not, know, I wasn't I manipulating. I was just excited to share we about that. I was just sharing okay. that. <laughs> people have hidden motives when they try to get Easy, Katie. She wants to uh -huh. So anyways, um, yeah, basically for me is I was reading some Buddhism books at the time. Uh-huh. And I wasn't trying to be Buddhist or anything, but I could uh -huh. appreciate that they wanted to be better people. So right. that's what I was kind of doing. And then I decided kind of randomly to go to church. And what had popped into my mind was two years earlier, mm -hmm. when I first moved to San Diego, there was this really old couple that came in to the place that I was working. And they mm -hmm. had invited me to go to church. And mm -hmm. it was in the middle of my chaotic work shift. And I thought they were totally weird for that. Like, mm -hmm. no, you know, it was my thought. Um, but they invited me to go to The Rock. And they said, you know, there's a lot of young people. Oh, which Pastor Miles, my yeah. Yeah, and it stuck in my mind because for me, I didn't really associate church with like normal people, like young people. Right. So I was right. like, hmm, but no, thank you. Um, and then two years later, I'm reading these Buddhism books. I decide to go to church and that's the church that, that I knew. So I was like, okay. So I went to that, that church and I just kind of sat in the back. Um, they ended up doing like an altar call and stuff and I ended up uh -huh. raising my hand. But uh, I actually, I didn't, I just didn't believe. It was like something right. I was doing because I thought like uh -huh. I had to. But as soon as like they said you had to stand up and come down, I just like mm -hmm. cut, cut, I just cut it off. I was like, I don't mm -hmm. know, you know. And so I went mm -hmm. did my own thing without conviction for like, you know, a few more mm -hmm. months. And then I ended up curious because mm -hmm. what I was hearing at that time, it, it, was far-fetched. I mean, you know, this guy, Jesus, who's God, mm -hmm. came to earth, like something I'd never heard. But it, yeah. then again, I couldn't like disprove it right away. It kind of made sense. So it stuck in the back uh -huh. of my mind. So then I decided to go back to church and my curiosity just continued to peak. And uh -huh. um, it was probably like two months of going to church. Mm -hmm. And I heard this message about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it was like a light switch went off. It was the weirdest thing ever. Like, everything illuminated and it freaked mm -hmm. me out so much that I was being brainwashed. So I kind of like mm -hmm. that same day I ran, I booked it out of that church mm -hmm. and I went home to my apartment and I got this old Bible out of my trunk that I had been meaning to ditch at my dad's house. And mm -hmm. I just, I figured, you know, if I, I needed to get to the bottom of it, like I needed to know, like, was this true or was this not? And if I just read it, I would be able to figure out if it was true or not. Cause that's how I always live my life. Like I'm very logical and reasonable and I can see mm -hmm. when things are just, you know, there's, there's big cracks. And so I started right. reading it and I had this sheet of paper with me and I would write down all of my questions that I had, because if, if I needed to get them answered, but because I didn't trust anyone at that time, my mm -hmm. pastor, I felt like was biased. Everybody else was brainwashed. You know, I was like, I'm going to save these questions mm -hmm. until I find a, 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 somebody I could ask, but I had to write them down in order to keep going. So my mind wouldn't get hung up on them. So mm -hmm. I just write them down and I just kept going in like the book of Matthew. And look, real quick at this point, I'm like freaking out because she's kind of let me in a little bit and I've just been praying for her, but never in the world did I think that, she would be reading her Bible, I mean, asking right. questions, and I'm just like, oh, right. my gosh. And I was like, I'm going <laughs> to try to keep my composure. And I'm like, oh, you're reading, I think, yeah, you're reading your Bible? Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and try not to freak her out. Like, so, so right. excited. And right. then I would uh -huh. hang up, I'd go tell everyone, I'm like, my sister, the one with the hard heart, the one that just didn't want to hear about, oh my gosh, like, I'm, and God's like working in her life. Like, this was, I, mean, yeah. I, had never, I still, I found old emails when I like told, like, this pastor and all this stuff and I was it was it was nuts so it's like it's calm uh, and like 
and thought out at her side, but on my side, I'm like, oh my gosh. But uh, yeah. Anyway, so, you yeah. so anyways, I just kept reading every night. And at the beginning of it, when I first opened the Bible, my prayer was pretty like blasphemous. You know, I was like, God, I don't believe you exist. But if you do, this guy at church says that you'll show me if I actually desire to know. And that's kind of what started it all. And then throughout reading the Bible, I mean, I, I ended up bringing back my list of questions and going through oh, them. Mark. Oh, what's up, dude? Towards like, oh, towards like the <laughs> end. And um, I just realized I had known the answer. I knew the answers to them. It was so bizarre. It's not like I had read in Matthew, like the answer to this question, but by revelation and just God bringing together, you know, just what he does, I, I knew how to answer the question. So it was like nobody else had told me. It was the most bizarre thing. And it was kind of a fork in the road. I was like, either mm -hmm. God's true and Christ is true, and this is going to change the rest of my life, or he's not, mm. and I just have to put it away and walk away. Mm. And wow, I just, you know, he's, he's true. Yeah. So it, it changed huh. my life, and so here I am. Yeah, and so anyway, she ended up moving to Orange County. She's like, God put it on her heart just to move, and people mm -hmm. meet us, and they think that we've grown up in the church. They think that right. we have, like, we've never lived apart and that we never have seen the evil yeah. world, and, like, we were just running amok in the world. Mm -hmm. And so yeah it's crazy what god's done because never in a million years i think we could live together and yeah. get along and because we were risk pro yeah that's yeah. so awesome sisters i'm I'm really glad and blessed to not only you know meet you but like you know a few years ago but like just like we're family now because it's yeah, like yeah. you know like the bond that we've shared like ever since then is just uh, it's on yeah you know, there's nothing i can explain it's just amazing like what the lord can do and then you know, looking at you guys all the time, I'm just like, wow, like, if that was your past, like, yeah. what did God do to, like, really, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah, transform you? And so, like, you know, that's, that just shows that we serve an anyone. amazing God. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely. And, yeah, yeah, that's so awesome. So how did you, um, how did you connect with Vision City Church? Because that's our, that's kind of like how, like, our, our mutual connection. Park yeah connection um yeah our mentors like someone i had met like right when i moved to huntington beach and stuck in my life and then katie came and they they're just our mentors they really they're calvary people through and through and they're very wanting pastors by the word of god that's what mm -hmm. they know and they re recommended a church at that time before katie moved i was hopping around i went to rock harbor i went mm -hmm. to and they tried out mariners i tried out harvest and mm -hmm. katie was coming and she just we like went to a couple and she's like no these churches just aren't like you know and so uh, we we're literally seeking a bible teaching church and they had recommended right. garrett they love garrett and they're like uh, he's so great they live in seal yeah. beach they're like it's a long drive for us but you got to go check them out uh -huh. so we checked them out one time and then because of my work schedule i don't think we got to go there again until like a few months later when katie moved or something and then mm -hmm. yeah so they wanted to teach we wanted someone who taught the word of god and garrett was yep he that's was, great that's so awesome. Yeah. And um, I also wanted to uh, ask you guys about um, the ministries that you're involved with. Um, first of all, uh, Equipped to Run. And uh, I want you to, you know, kind of explain to our audience of how you guys, uh, what what led you to start that um, that page. And I've actually, first, before Equipped to Run, you, you two started, I think, sometime last year or two, you know, you happened to go from 500 followers to, like, 50, 50 million followers on Instagram. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just like, dang. And like, cause you have like really inspiring blogs. And so, um, whoever wants to go first, uh, explain to you like what led you, how God led you to, uh, write, uh, do these inspiring writings on social media. Um, well, what inspired us to start writing on social media, I guess was just, I mean, it's just, it's just God, really. I mean, just putting it on your heart. And it's like when you, you know, spend time with him and your cup starts to fill up, it's like it's his natural outpouring, you know? And I think the social media aspect of it, like do it on social media, I mean, it's just kind of, it's like everything can be used as a blessing or a curse. And social media, as we know, is used so often as more of a curse. It just comparison and just isolation and all of those things mm -hmm. it's like a way for us to reach out and share god's love using something that's normally as a curse as a blessing so 
Mm -hmm. You just imagine people going through their bubbles at the top, you know, not a lot of them breathe life into people's life. They're just random monotonous things or worse, they're drinking and just lifeless stuff. So it's like, I think that was just God probably foresaw the good in it, even though we didn't probably logically think about it at the time. Mm -hmm. And he used it. So we just naturally, what we post on social media just comes from our time spent with God. So he ministers to us, fills our cups, and then we just want to pour out and it happens to be on social media. Yeah. And there's just so few people who are like, even our age is like, well, I'm 35 and just a lot of rare people who literally are sharing what life looks like as a Christian at our age, how to live that out and what it looks like. I mean, a lot of people have this people, especially non-believers that Christians don't have fun, that we're a bunch of like weirdos who just don't. But so this just like gets them to see, like invite them in and be like, this is what life looks like. And it's just mm -hmm. like, it is just as good. It's that much better than when you have the God. And so many people don't have that safe spot to ask questions or anything. Mm -hmm. So we just hope to be like that transparent, real people that they can connect with and ask questions with. And mm -hmm. yeah, just like the blogs or just, I started my blog too, just as Katie did, just that overflow and wanting to share and i'm such a talker too though sometimes that instagram limits me i need to i'm like i need to share more and so, I know, you have like fifty thousand small dots on your instagram story just like of you talking and just, yeah oh no, sometimes i go on and on <laughs> hey but it's all good though you know that's yeah. you know you're using that platform to to share what god has done and like to minister to others and that's mm -hmm. you know what great way to use technology or social media then than just sharing the love of Christ and just uh, encouragement, which is awesome. Um, and also with the, minis the, the, the ministry or the, um, the page that you started equipped to run and uh, any, any, um, any links as far as like relation to your personal blogs or is it something different? Um, yeah, on your you know, to run page? that's, you pretty much see God's behind the scenes to God's working in our life because mm -hmm. I've always, I mean, Along the problem, God, God moved in Sarah's heart before mm -hmm. or after he moved in mine. But it's like we kind of had an idea that we would be doing something together. We just didn't know how that would look. And so mm -hmm. you, like, and it happened in stages. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. things just didn't have like equipped to run was a byproduct of like a long period of time and God stretching and waiting mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, but Sarah started her blog. I started my blog. We were kind of doing our own things for a while. Then God took us through some stuff. He pruned us, did all of that stuff. And the result of that was equipped to run. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I mean, I think there's just something so powerful when two people come together and there's different mm -hmm. perspectives and Katie has different spiritual gifts than me. Mm -hmm. And so when they can come together and have a one place to see so many different parts of just allowing God to use us in different ways to minister to them in different areas and seasons of their yes. life. It's just powerful. And just for us to be able to come together and encourage together. And mm -hmm. it's just really cool to see what God does. And it does, it gives, it gives a lot of people behind the scenes of who we are mm -hmm. and just how we live life. And, and hopefully and it welcomes them in on just more of a personal level. And so yeah. that's what, that was why I'm really excited to come together. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. Now um, I wanted to bring this up too, because um, two good looking girls like you and people are saying like, what, you guys are not even married yet. And I know you two have been posting a lot about being content in singleness, which is really awesome, especially because like people that look at you that don't know you personally, they just looking like how can two good looking girls like you guys, good looking like you can, <laughs> are not married yet at your age. And so, or and they don't even know your age, but good two looking girls like you, they are not, don't have boyfriends. They don't have, you know, you know, they're not even married or anything like that. Um, what what led you to um, uh, start being content in your singleness? Whoever wants to go first. Um, gosh, well, when I came to the Lord, it, he literally became my focus. I knew I had so much stuff I needed to work on that any part of like guys or any of that, just I just, I mean, just didn't even have a thought in my mind. I'm like, God, I need you to just need you to do a work in me. And from day one, he literally was all I was focused on. And so because mm -hmm. I think at that beginning stages of my relationship with God, he literally has mm -hmm. been first and, and through all the way up to this time. And so that's never changed. That's never wavered. And so, so for me to be, I've always, since I've, 
started walking with him, been content because he's shown him who he is in my life. He's like the number mm -hmm. one person who matters most. And nothing has, ever come, way, so. yeah, nothing has <laughs> ever come before him. And so, um, yeah, I was even talking to Katie today, like about just dating and everything. And I'm like, I would so much rather be single than feel like I am suddenly trying to stretch God and, and find some guy that wasn't, I wasn't right for me or that I wasn't feeling strongly about and knew that that was the Lord, what the Lord planned for me. I'd way rather be single than be in that relationship. Cause it just, I'm like, gosh, I want to wow. go into it. So excited that that is what God, that I know that that's where God's leading me, where I just know that mm -hmm. I know. Otherwise I'm like, man, I'd rather be single. I don't want to be in a relationship mm -hmm. that's like, well, he's great on tap. I mean, he's kind of, he's good here, but I don't know about there. And so that's what mm -hmm. it's just always, I guess it's, I, I mean, there's a parts like we talked about last week together in our video that mm. I'm excited to have a husband for certain aspects. I'm like, man, right. God, that's going to be so exciting when you just for this and this. And it's something I get, I get excited looking forward to, but it's definitely mm. something that just keeps me excited with God. I'm never just like, mm. I'm not longing for that. I'm just like excited to see how God's going to work. And uh -huh. It is nuts to think I am getting older and I'm like, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not dropping the bar. I'm not going to be like, when yeah. I'm older, I think maybe <laughs> I'll start settling for that. And I'm yeah. just like, Lord, whenever your timing is. And so it really, it, like I said, I think it really helped coming into my relationship with the God that he was my number one and he always has been. And so that, uh -huh. it really helps. Um, I think, cool. I, I guess for me, I mean, for me, a big thing that, I cherish about singleness and doesn't make me in a hurry to get rid of my singleness is that I realize I have so much to learn continually about love, like really what love looks mm -hmm. like. Because I think when we grow up in our homes, we don't question the kind of love we've seen. You know, you don't have to be from an abused household or from a um, overtly like traumatic household mm -hmm. to have love skewed the right perception of love so being able to mm -hmm. to lean into christ and and see him as my groom and what that looks like to be loved helps me know what to look for so that mm -hmm. i don't settle and bring somebody in that that god wouldn't want for me that can't love me the way that he should love me and yeah. same for me i have a lot in my heart of ways that i'm unable to give love that I, I need to learn and rewire with God. And so that's a huge thing for me. That's like just a, a very solid thing. And I know the longer I wait and I allow God to work in myself, the more that he's going to be working in that man for me, because I'm going to desire the man that's going to reflect how I see love in my heart. You know, it's going to be compatible. So there's like that, that excitement there in that expectation and waiting so and it does that help helps. i've seen a lot of people close to us um christians and not who are married who i mean sadly some of them have a divorce some of them are miserable in that marriage because they were so dead set on that marriage just being their saving grace and they just had to get married and they almost ignored that it was maybe not right timing not right mm -hmm. And I look mm -hmm. back at the comfort of my singleness, the safety that I have with God, and just like, mm -hmm. oh, Lord, I'm so glad I'm not in that position. And, right. and well, and a huge thing is, is you want to be fulfilled in God, fulfilled in Christ, having all your needs met in Christ before marriage, because that's when marriage is a blessing. If your needs aren't met uh, mm -hmm. vertically, and you're trying to get those needs met horizontally, that marriage won't be a blessing because it's going to be strife. Mm -hmm. You're going to be trying to pull from each other what you should have been pulling from God. Mm -hmm. And not saying you can't get over that and work it out together once you're in it, but it's going to be a lot harder. And it's a lot harder for two people to see and redirect upwards, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. when they come into the marriage, had they not done it, you know, before the marriage. So, yeah. Wow. So. That's so amazing. I think, the last few years, you know, us all, all three of us together, we've been on that singleness journey too. Mm -hmm. I remember you two been kind of like having the sneak peek of like, you know, the potential girlfriend, you know, for me and all that <laughs> stuff. I think you knew, you know, you know, I'm talking about and all that. And I think we both, I think we all understood that, you know, at the end, you know, what I learned throughout the whole thing, girls may be hot, but so is hell. So, <laughs> and, and, um, so I, so I, so I think, what is I like what you mentioned, uh, Sarah? I think it was you that posted it. Um, I think last week, a few days ago, uh, getting married is not the goal. Our goal is to be more like Jesus, mm -hmm. and um, 
And so I think, and I think too, I think I remember hearing uh, Jared Wilson actually say that too, when, you know, when he was still here, we were preaching the, a dating series, uh, how, you know, our, our goal is not to become married, but to be more like Christ. And so, mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's, that's just awesome. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really stoked and just a blessing for me to see you too, just kind of like, not kind of, but just to see you being content in singleness and just letting the Lord be in control of it instead of you trying to drive the dating force or the dating yeah. force or anything like that. Because I've seen people that have put the effort to it and this is going, out, you know, it just goes nowhere. And I've seen it myself too. You've seen it when I try to do it and all that stuff because <laughs> yeah. you've witnessed it. I think it reminds me too what um, Stephen Verdict says, like, uh, I, I'm just paraphrasing, uh, instead of finding the right one, be the right one. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Because Amen. if if you trust the Lord, if you trust the Lord with your personal life, he's he's got great things planned for yeah. you. You don't, you don't have to seek to find in to find that one. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. you're just missing out on the blessing that God wants to do in your in your life. And well, so, sometimes, yeah, you're running so around so far, looking around like this that you just your 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 eyes get pulled off of the kingdom of what's unseen and everything, mm -hmm. and you just become you just get you just start letting the world tell you what you're missing out on all the stuff but when you look up at god you're like god you're good like this is mm -hmm. what you it's your plan you take it i don't want to have to find my up, chad how you doing brother chad's a one a good pastor buddy of mine from san diego he actually just got promoted i think from youth pastor to executive pastor oh, oh, that's, praise god. That's cool, yeah, that uh, at a church down there if that's correct give me a thumbs up if i'm correct on that if not uh uh comment or correct me um so speaking of dating have uh let's get to the fun side or just you uh. know just the goofy side you know but <laughs> nothing serious but yeah. goofy side um speaking of dating have you ever thought about going to the batch on the bachelor no. uh, you know <laughs> that's actually really funny that you would ask yeah that. it's actually very funny <laughs> we've like Do we like we agree with it yeah, no. no. But if we could tailor it to make it a Christian bachelor of some sort, oh my God, <laughs> See, you know? it would be courting, not yeah. what they do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna see who these 25 people are and uh -huh. see if I have anything in common with them. And then be like talking to them and having conversations. And, they and there would be no engagement at the end. Yeah. It would just be, okay, now, we're, now we can date because I think we're compatible. And yeah. also they, I mean, they travel far and wide to get the, they get the best, like the most eligible Christian great guys across America yeah. and then put all in one place. And then we get to just sit there and talk and have conversation. And that would be me so and back probably, to the question. Yeah. Have so we thought so yeah, in a in sense we that have. way we have. We actually, have. <laughs> actually we've even um we even applied for it and we pitched our idea how we pitched our idea no way yeah we said if you want to switch it up a little bit <laughs> and i'm like america needs something wholesome they need something and something good <laughs> good and it's just like they're you probably like okay so-called christians on on the air right you want yeah the they probably read it air. they're like who are, but who are these freaks they're yeah, like who they're are these weirdos <laughs> so now wait yeah. sarah uh didn't you try out for a game show an old game show that was gonna um like, yeah that was i believe it was the one with andy cohen what was it called that love so connection God, love connection oh my yeah. gosh and god saved me from that show i yeah. mean after watching a couple episodes i was like oh my goodness and so i remember i offered to be your bodyguard that you missed <laughs> because yeah i wanted, I, mean, to, I wanted to go see like who well, this guy is and there you know, is whoever this their excuse, their excuse, I mean, I was up, up, they found people all over America, and I was yeah. in the top, like, 20, and their excuse for canceling, I mean, for not going forward, like, I got, I got drug tested, I got, went to the doctors and got a physical, but they said they could not find three Christian guys that would have been, I mean, enough people to go on the date with me, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. that shows you how, well, obviously, and my future husband was not going to go on some weird show like that, I guess, but yeah. it shows, um, well, I guess he, they could, he didn't because they didn't find him. But yeah, they didn't <laughs> find they didn't find anybody who wanted a Christian man who wanted to go on that show, which I get. I didn't know what it was either until after I watched him. Like, oh my gosh, that would have been so. Un I would have gone on the dates. I mean, some of those girls were going home with the guys after the date, and that just. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's crazy. That is. I and, remember uh, you said you were going to be my bodyguard. Yeah, because yeah. I actually wanted to go see it. Like, 
I was going to support you 100%. That would, it would have been funny like, I because a... I would have kept it Christian, but they probably were like, oh, yeah. I don't know how dramatic my show episode would have been. And, but, and then right. at the end, they wanted you to like rate the guy on like the based on their looks from one to 10. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want to, yeah, that's just, that. that's worldly. And, and no, yeah. I'm not going to do that. And so I'm glad that yeah. the Lord protected me, but I'm glad mm -hmm. you were willing to go with me too. Of course, of course, anything I would do, you know, so I could, you know, hang out with my sisters. So, <laughs> um, all speaking of game shows, Sarah, weren't you on a, um, a game show recently? You won yes, some cash. I did. I did win some cash. I won some dollar lames. Um, uh, yeah, I was on funny. You should ask actually. Funny and you should it's ask. with a bunch of comedians, kind of like B and C list comedians. Um, and okay, I've seen this kind of like Hollywood Squares sort of thing, and so I, I remember I, I watched it on CBS the other day. Yeah, yeah, so, it's yeah, right after Doctor Phil. So if your sisters watch, you probably watched a couple episodes. I mean, your mom or anyone watched a couple episodes after Doctor Phil. But Dr. Um, Phil. yeah, that was cast cool. me outside. How about that? Yeah, how about how about <laughs> cast me outside? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that was fun. You were I was only up against one other person, so my odds of winning. I'm like, all right. I was like, Lord, help me. And I almost won an extra five thousand dollars. But I missed the one, did, one question away. Did. One question away. When did it air? Because I can't believe I missed it. I know. I got to send you the link. I, February 3rd, I think it aired. I mean, I'll find the exact day. I think it's February 3rd. But I'll send you the link. Please. I want to watch it. It's Haley funny. Saw it. You seen yeah, my, like you the first one. You seen yeah, my Haley Price right episode, right? Did you? What? So, you seen my Price is Right episode, Yeah, yeah. That was great. Yeah. That's what I thought about you. It was so funny when I was there. But, I remember man, we, were that... together, we were sitting together at Vision one time. And... Uh, and I remember Garrett was mentioning about, like, if you're on a game, you know, preaching about, you know, being a guest on a game show or something like that. I'm like, is he, is he talking about me? I <laughs> said it was in February. I'm like, <laughs> he's directing towards me. I remember looking at you. I'm like, well, is this a message about me or something like that? Because <laughs> he mentioned, he mentioned so many specific things that related to me on a game yeah. show. I forgot what else, other things, but it was happening to relate to me. That's I like, funny. I mean, every time, name, I, I ended up having to go to that game show a couple of times because I was a runner up the first time. But every time I was there, I talked about Jesus. When they did my makeup, I talked about Jesus, shared my testimony. Mm -hmm. And so it's funny yeah. that we can go do those things and God just uses us there, which is funny. We want to do Price is Right. I told Katie, I'm like, we got to go to Price is Right next. Yeah. That Let I me know. Actually, we I had mean, I can't so be contested. I can't be contested for another three years from now, but oh, wow. I can still go with you. Yeah, so. we had an audition date, I mean, a, a show date set up, and then we just canceled that before we moved, but we got to go back there. That was a good one. No, we'll, we'll, we'll go sometime. We'll go, because yeah. yeah, it's be a great fun. experience. Yeah, that'd whether be fun. You're not, whether you're, you get chosen as a contestant or oh, not, Oh, we're going to get chosen. Experience. We're going to get yeah. chosen, Daniel. Well, we actually... Will get you, yes. Because you appeared on a game show, you have to, you can't, you're not eligible uh, for another three years on another game show. That's I'm the, eligible. They, some of them have different oh, rules. I'm some eligible. Some of them have different rules. <laughs> and I will check well, because their rules. I know, I know Katie's eligible, but I, Sarah, at least Sarah, you're not eligible till. I they mean, have another, different three. rules. You don't know about those I know, rules. but they have contracts. You have to sign a contract. No, yeah, I know, I know. Between each yeah. other. <laughs> so. Well, the one, our game show, that when I was on, they didn't care if you were on other game shows within like one year or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I, still but I know track, the I price still. is right. You have to, you can't be on another one. Like, you, like if you're, if you appear on the game show the last three years, you can't be on, or you can't be eligible as a contestant. So, oh, and even right. though they choose you, even though they choose you as a contestant and they they see uh, your history that you yeah they, you look like some apartment. yeah they want to yeah. they don't want to think that they hire professional gamers yeah to go on their like shows. otherwise they like they won't give you they won't give you your prizes you know so yeah well I'll get but, my money yeah <laughs> <laughs> speaking of money like hey because you won the game show you're gonna treat us out for dinner or something like no. I well when I still haven't I still haven't got my check yet I emailed them like hey is my check coming and they're you like still you got have a check yet. Yeah, they All said, right. you have up until 90 days after the air date. I'm like, okay, well, I was like, a sister needs some cash right now, right? I know. I need cash, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, once everything's back to normal, you know, you know, I'm waiting for a dinner again, all three of us, you know? So just just the three. I'm losing. I think I'm losing you. Hold on. There I'm sorry. Go. Someone was trying to fake time. had us. a phone call oh. come in. Yeah. But three. But three. The three there. of us, you know, for dinner, you know, when we're ready, when everything's back to normal, you know. So I have a five to seven minutes with you because Instagram only gives us an hour. So um, oh. let me let's play a little about a little uh, pick, uh, pick your preference. 
Um, I'm just gonna, I, I had a list, but I lost the list. So I'm just gonna say Go it off the top it. of my head. So you, you choose what you, uh, what you prefer. Okay. Um, Cheesecake Factory or BJ's? BJ's. Oh, that's like, really? you, lo you love Cheesecake Factory. You're like, what? <laughs> should be at BJ's, no. But you know what? Cheesecake Factory has that big menu, and I they have an incredible menu, and you taught I me like that. So both. I guess I like them both. I probably haven't to her, like she said. I haven't been to the Cheesecake Factory enough to... But they have such a big... I just remember they have that incredible big menu, so I think, yeah, I don't know, okay. I might need to go visit know. Cheesecake. Was the last time you guys went with, with me? You? Yeah. 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 That's the only time I've ever been to Cheesecake me Factory. Too. That's the only time? <laughs> yeah. Me too. Um, Taco Bell or Del Taco? Ooh, Taco Bell, probably. You know, I know. Taco Bell. I guess Taco Bell. I, I mean, used to like... eat Taco Bell a lot. <laughs> it reminds me of my glory days. <laughs> uh, Starbucks or coffee bean? Coffee no, bean. I like Starbucks. Mm. I don't know, oh. though. Sometimes I feel bad. So I, there's some things I like that coffee bean. Sometimes coffee I like. Bean. I just like them both. For my I'm a, I'm a coffee bean person. Yeah. Alex, Alexa Bueller hates, hates me now because she... She she likes Starbucks. She hates coffee bean, and I know Christian Fambro worked at Coffee Bean, and I love coffee bean. I do <laughs> like coffee bean too. I do. Yeah, um, Honda or Toyota. Honda. Honda. Um, let's see. Uh, you team Edward or team Jacob? Ah, uh, Edward. I think Edward. Are these um, the vampire? Yeah, Twilight. Twilight. The vampire. You never um, watched Twilight, huh, Katie? I have. No, I have. Yeah, so Edward's <laughs> the main guy, or who's the other guy? I don't Taylor know. Taylor Lachlan, pass. whatever his name is. I don't know. I can't I know. pass. Um, in and out or Five Guys? In and out. Um, only had, only, I think I've only had the fries at Five Guys. I just been too long. I have persons have had those. I can't make an educated right guess right now. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, that I can't think of anything else. So let me ask you this. Um, wor worship songs. Like, uh, what, what was your last, what, your recent favorite worship song that you've been listening to? Or Waymaker. Waymaker. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you said the same. And concept. there's one by Matt Kearney. Oh, face to face, face to face by Matt Kearney. You gotta listen to that one. You would like that, that one. one. That, the background beats. You would really like that. That one. one's real good. Have you heard about? Have you heard the blessing from Carrie Job? No. I want to say maybe I can't remember. I have to look. Yeah, at it. her uh, her husband and Elevation Worship oh, yeah, wrote it together. Y'all yeah. wrote it together. It's based oh. off number six. Uh, well, uh, you know, may the Lord bless you, keep you, may His face shine upon you. It's basically, you know oh, that. Oh yeah, we'll have to check it out again. It's really good. Like it's it's actually they just wrote that like three week three four weeks ago. Wow. And they had an album planned to be released two weeks ago, but because of the strong response of that song, just on the Sunday morning webcast, oh, wow. they decided to postpone the the album release date so they can add that song to the album. And so uh, it was really cool. Like I, I was as I was hearing that song, even though like I hear Pastor Garrett say that all the time after every sermon, it's just just singing yeah, it's it. Powerful. I'm just, it was really powerful. It was just, you know, the Lord, you know, just receiving it as I'm singing it. It's just amazing. Like you just felt the Holy Spirit go through you. And so, um, so that was just, that was, yeah. So if I'll, I'll send you a link for that. Yeah, um, that'd be great. You're, you, you, I think you'll like the song. Okay. You'll really like the song. And you need to listen and to it? Face to Face by Max Kearney. Face by Max Kearney. You send me the link too. You, heard it, you heard it here first. I'll send you the link. That's from me. But I showed the, her the song okay. first. Yeah, so it was from me to I, her. It impressed upon me. Okay. Okay. We'll send you I will say Katie said it. No, okay. <laughs> That's okay. She can have credit. Excellent. Don't worry. I'm no, I don't choose favorites. I love both of you the same. So, um, so um, for both of you, uh, what has been your life verse that you hold dear, dear to your heart? Gosh. Well, one that just comes to mind always is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. And that's just because, like, it was one of the verses I think God set me up with from the very beginning, you know? Like, he knows the plans he has for me. 
not to, you know, to prosper not to harm me, to give me a hope in a future. And I remember like mm -hmm. from the beginning, like just turning from my old life mm -hmm. and going towards an unknown life, but mm -hmm. a life safe in him, which until you have that experience of God being faithful in your life through trust mm -hmm. in him, it's kind of hard to like, like it's unknown. It's so unknown. You're, you're trusting this God that that's like new to you because you've never like, mm -hmm. you know, had that relationship. So that was like one of the first verses God just confirmed in my life. So Jeremiah wow. twenty nine eleven, super popular, but it it always you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess mine would be Habakkuk two three. It's like for the vision waits its appointed time. If it seems mm -hmm. slow, wait for it. Um, it shall it will um, it, it will not parry, but it will surely come. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. It just kept God used that one at one point in my life. Just it was coming up everywhere, and it was crazy. It was a powerful time, and I really don't know what mm -hmm. that vision is. But God mm -hmm. knows. It's just like whatever. It seems slow. Like sometimes our life, it seems slow for what we feel in our heart is mm -hmm. coming to pass. But God's mm -hmm. just like you know. In that verse, it's just He kept bringing it up, and it's like if it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. Mm -hmm. And it's just like for the vision waits, it awaits its appointed time. And it was just so powerful because it's almost like God Himself being like, if it seems slow, it's coming. Just wait for it. At its appointed time, it will it will come. That's and good. so that one, I don't know that one's special and near dear to my heart. And it's just like that's you know, amazing. yeah. That's amazing. But what about you, Daniel? What's yours? Um, well, lately because you know, as like we talked about earlier, being content in singleness and just you know what God has shown me a lot lately, the last couple of years is so. Um, mine would be Philippians 4 or 7. Um, I'll just paraphrase it because I'm basically just guarded, you know, by the blood of Jesus. And so you're just guarded in Christ Jesus because, yeah. um, you know, I learned that a girl will not satisfy me. I know I learned that Amen. marriage will not, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, marriage can, will be a happy event, but it's not going to give you. It'll complement, not satisfy. Yeah, but yeah, it won't be, it won't satisfy you 100% like the love of Christ can and so yeah. um so yeah all my all my cares and everything is going to be identified in him and that's what philippians 4 7 says and uh i always keep a, a keychain you know my, my dog tag my necklace on uh you know it is engraved isaiah 40 31 and uh so i have a lot of verses but philippians 4 7 has been my key verse yeah. as far as trying to you know stay guarded um, and, you know, guard, you know, guarding my heart and just, you know, being content in, in Christ. And so that, that's just my key verse for, you know, for me as of late. Yeah. I like uh, that. I, I wish we could talk more. It's crazy how fast more. an hour goes, huh? I know it that's really rough. does. <laughs> yeah. And so I wish, I really want to talk. I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk more because yeah, we will in person. Yeah, yeah. Because. I'm so glad you guys moved from, you know, back to Orange County yeah. just because, you know, I really miss you guys. And so, and it just feels forever that I, I, I don't even see you. So, uh, and I'm so glad you accepted my invite to, for us to talk here. Yeah. Um, and for those of you watching, give, uh, give both my sisters a follow, Katie and Sarah Armstrong. Uh, they have individual pages. They also have a, uh, a group page called Equipped to Run. Give them a follow as well. Uh, those two are amazing. Uh, just keep oh, them in your prayers. Good. And uh, I just want to say thank you guys again. Before we go, um, I know I, I, I sense the Lord put in your heart something during the whole coronavirus pandemic. Uh, the Lord put uh, a word of encouragement you want to share to the viewers. Uh, um, if you want to go ahead and share it for us, um, you got two minutes. <laughs> oh, for this, I mean... It just, it always comes down to seek the Lord. You know, during this time, there's a lot of emotions that can be stirred up, especially fear, especially death. Nobody likes to talk about or think about death. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the perfect time to get answers, you know, mm -hmm. and the only place you can go to actually have those is the Lord. He's the only one that knows the beginning from the end, you know, mm -hmm. and there's peace in him. There's satisfaction oh. in him. There's hope in Amen. him. And all of these things that we experience, I mean, this is just one thing. They're going to keep yeah. coming, and you can build that foundation now so that when these things come in the future, you don't have to fear them. So That's amazing. Amen. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, I love, love you, you both. Daniel. And thank you again so much for joining me. Thank you for and, having uh, us. Thank you. You're yeah, truly tomorrow, gifted. And all you guys are watching, tomorrow I'm having Kristen Hill host of uh, Differently. 
on IGTV. She's going to be joining me. And then Friday, Chris and Sandy. Next week, I have great people. Jason Powell, Garrett, Pastor Garrett, too. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, keep in touch, guys. And uh, well. thank you guys again so much. Love you both. Love you guys that are watching. And, love uh, you, too. Archive available later on YouTube. This All week, right. So, Bye, God bless Bye, you guys. Love you. And yeah. peace. Take, take care. care.